We are reading from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 1 to 3. Right. The Bible says, are we beginning to praise ourselves again? I'm reading uh, the NLT version. Are we beginning to praise ourselves again? Are we like others who need to bring you letters of recommendation or who ask you to write such letters on their behalf? Surely not. The only letter of recommendation we need is you yourselves. Your lives are a letter written in our hearts. Everyone can read it and recognize our good work among you. Clearly, this is, would be my focus today, this verse. Clearly, you are a letter from Christ showing the results of our ministry among you. This letter is written not with pen, pen and ink, but with the spirit of the living God. It is carved not on tablets of stone, but on human hearts. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for gathering us this morning, this afternoon. Thank you because, Lord, you never gather your people in vain. And so, God, as we've come, we've come with expectations in our hearts. Holy Spirit, I have no words to tell them. My advice is not enough for them. Would you use me and that your words may come through my mouth, that you will minister to our hearts, including myself, that, Lord, we will get to learn and hear from you. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can have your seats. So this, this, this week I battled. I battled a, lo a lot with God because I, I thought I'd want to continually go to the next, you know, uh, conversation on outreach because that's the conversation we are having this month. Form me. Form me outreach. You said form is a plan, a plan of action. And one of the things that has been um, articulated here by the Plaginas is that God has given us a mandate to go out and reach and win souls for him and make disciples. In fact, that was the thing that he gave as the commission before he go, went to heaven. And the commission is in two, in, two, in two scriptures. We can use two scriptures. We can use Acts chapter 1 verse 8. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be witnesses, my witnesses, in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the world. Or we can use Matthew 28, 18, which says, 18 to 20, what? Yeah, uh, 18 to 20. It says, but all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go out and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the, of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and I will be with you until the end of the age. Those are some of the memory verses that were to apply in when you wali flourish kama mimi, are able to <laughs> join plug in. You'll be able to memorize scripture. Amen? So we, we, I, I started last week and said that there are two ways to do outreach. Way number one is that your life gets to be the one that makes people either love Jesus or run away from Jesus. And that's what we are talking about when Paul was telling them that your lives are a letter that is written. That we do not even need to have recommendation letters to say that we have been your ministers and this is the work that we've done for you. No, your lives already can't tell by the things that we see, that indeed we have done a good work in your life. And so we said, your life is a letter that speaks that whether you like it or not, once you get out of your house, your life speaks. The problem is, what does it speak? Does it speak good things or does it speak bad things? Because it speaks. In your workplace, it speaks. On social media, it speaks. With your, with your children, it speaks. Your life speaks. It says something. And so we said the contents of that letter are the fruits that come out of your life. Because Jesus said that you will know them by their fruits. Sindio. So the fruits that you emanate tell us the contents of your letter. Because if you are you know, not connected to the vine... The fruits that will come out of you are not good fruits. Is that true? They are not good fruits. By the way, one of the things I said, that if, if someone shows you, 
Singe react munga munge jua. If someone shows you who they are, believe them. Believe them. Save yourself the damage of heartache later. Believe them. People are who they are, who they show you, more than what they say. More than what they say. And so we said that God desires for all of us to bear good fruit. That is his desire. It glorifies him when we bear good fruit. And that's why he says, if you want to bear good fruit, you need to be connected to the vine. And the vine is Jesus. Abide in me and I in you and you will bear much fruit. You cannot bear good fruit apart from Jesus. You can't. It's impossible. That's why I said one of the most important things, and I love that that was a charge that was given to Plaginas here, is that your daily devotion or life is crucial to you as a Christian. It is the place that you grow. It is the place that you abide in him. Sunday is just two hours of your time. And you go. And you meet the world as it is. If you do not cultivate a consistent and intentional devotional life, and what I mean by that is that you have a specific time every day to read your Bible and to pray. Every day. I remember one of the assignments that I gave here, as we were finished last week, finishing last week's sermon, is that you need to have a specific time. See, at you, you know those ones are, so you, you, you pray when you are eating, or you pray when you are about to shut your eyes. You have not spent time with God. You have just whispered a prayer. But truly, when you require, you require time to be molded by God. And that means you need to set aside intentional time for you. Time that works. By the way, you say your devotional time should be the time that you are most alert. Don't give God areas. Don't give God the worst of your times. That when you're completely tired, that's when you want to do your devotion. Some people are morning people, others are evening people. You know very well you are not a morning person, but you want to wake up at three. It will not work. It will not be effective. But you choose a time that you can completely immerse yourself in God's word and completely get to spend time with him. Now, as I was going through the week and praying about today's sermon, I realized that I cannot go far from this, this conversation of influence. Why? Because it is one thing for me to challenge you and for you to understand that you need to have a devotional life. But I can guarantee you, after last week's charge, many of us started well on Monday, but did not get to Wednesday. That one I know. You started with a lot of vigor on Monday, but then by, by Wednesday, you're like, hey, yeah, yeah. Some of you have remembered that you were supposed to have a devotional life when you saw me today. You're like, ah. Tulikuwa na fakso ma Bible. And the reason is this. When I was ending last week, someone, I said, the devil does not want you to pray. He does not want you to read God's word. He doesn't. In fact, you are, you, you, you are very good. You, 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 you please him when you don't read the Bible. You are of no threat to him. If you don't read the Bible, if you do not pray, you are of no threat to the, to the, to the, to the devil. You continue going to church and not growing year after year after year. No, no impact on the kingdom of darkness because you do not have power to change things. Because when you read your word, God begins to show you who you are. Your true identity. What, what, what you have. Because the Bible says, a, a, a son who is not mature is like a slave. Hmm? He's treated like a, a slave. He does not have the inheritance that he's supposed to be given as a son. So when you read God's word, it shows you who you are. It shows you your capabilities. It shows you your power against the evil one. So you're able to stand. You're able to stand discouragement. You're able to stand fear. 
You're able to stand worry. You know how to quote scripture. It keeps you grounded. So the devil does not want you to know that. He wants to keep you there, defeated. Woyshe, woyshe. Blaming him for everything. Now, by the way, at that point, he's... Yada is not even... And prayer is the thing. By the way, our weapons are not carnal. Because we do not fight against flesh and blood. By the way, we fight against principalities and powers and rulers in high places. So if you don't pray, what? how are you fighting? And he wants you to stay there. And so today I'm going to address the things that take us out of our devotional lives and how to overcome them. So that this week you can go with a fresh boost of life and say, I can do this. I can spend time with God. I can, I can uh, you know, overcome. Are we together? And number one enemy, number one enemy of your devotional life, of your growth in Christ is your flesh. Number one enemy is your what? Is your flesh. Your flesh, that naturally, you do not like God. Naturally, you don't love the things of God. It is not in you. You would naturally watch a series for eight hours. Eight hours. Some we follow, some follow series for months. Like months. You are like, what? I've been watching this series for... But tell that person to do a, you know, cover to cover of the Bible. Hi. The questions there are people who ask you, people do that. <laughs> people actually read the Bible cover. Because it does not come naturally to you. The flesh is naturally resistant to the things of God. And that is why you tried this week to do your devotions. But at some point, you couldn't. And there are things that suck out energy from your flesh. I want to read, I want to show us from the book of Matthew chapter 26, verse 41. Jesus says, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is, the spirit is willing. You know what, what was happening here? Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus is about to be betrayed. He goes to the mountain to pray. And he goes with his disciples. He takes the inner core, Peter, James, and John, closer to him where they could see him. And he goes and starts to pray. Say, you guys sit here, watch and pray with me. He goes out to pray. After one hour, he comes back and finds them asleep. He wakes them up and says, guys, you need to pray. You need to wake up and watch and pray with he goes again. He comes back and finds them asleep again. And that's why he was saying this. That watch and pray so that you do not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Most of the time, our spirit is willing. You, you, want, you want to read your Bible. Your spirit tells you this is the right thing to, to do. You know the way you, know, you, know, you, know the way you, you used to be told... Work hard and you will pass. Read and you will pass. Everybody knows that. Hmm. I don't want to ask you what grade you got, but it was very hard. You know, you know, but it is inbuilt in you to love God. It is inbuilt in you because He created you with His essence. You are, you get your true satisfaction from God. And your soul and your spirit knows that. But it says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Let's read Romans 7, verse 14 to 25. You guys will give me a little bit more time because of the plug-in graduation. Is that okay? All right. Uh, Romans chapter 7. Let's read from verse 14. Romans 7 from verse 14. Are we there? We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, it's like a tongue twister. 
If I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do, who, 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 who do it, but it is sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me. That is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do. But the evil I do not want to do, this one I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I, I, I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me. Waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. And then he says, what a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? I don't know about you, but I have found myself in spaces where the things I want to do, I don't do them. I have found myself in spaces where the things that I literally know I should not be doing, those are the things that I find myself doing. And Paul says, if I do the things that I don't want to do, then it means it is not me who is doing them. Because I don't want to do them, right? So that it means there is another force inside of me that is doing this thing, that is compelling me to do these things. One of the things that um, has been part of my life, and maybe it is some of those things that God uses so that he can help someone to help others. At age 13, I was introduced to pornography. Age 13. And I got addicted to pornography for years. Mind you, I'm a pastor's kid. So it's not that I'm not going to church. It's not that I'm not, I don't know scripture. It's not that I, I don't pray. But yet, there was something that was introduced in my system that stuck with me for years. And I reached a point of saying, you know, the point of frustration. Because you know you, are not, you don't want to do this thing. You know you are not supposed to be doing it. But yet, it gets to a point that you feel you are so powerless against it. I used to know when it's calling me, when the phone is calling me, you know, and, and, you, and you know you're being drawn you, and, and you feel powerless. At that particular point, something overwhelms you and you go and, you, and then you feel so guilty afterwards because you know that's not what God has called you for. But yet you can't stop it. Yet you can't bring an end to it. Yet it keeps holding on to you over and over and over. You fast and pray. It breaks for two weeks and comes back. And you're wondering, what is this? And what the devil used porn in my life to do is to snatch out every energy for God, every energy for prayer, every energy for reading God's word. That I feel I don't want to read God's word. I do not even have the slightest of drive to read God's word. I am okay sleeping without reading God's word and praying. And that's what the devil does. When he introduces sin in your life, he uses that thing to snatch out the energy out of your prayer life. And every one of us here, if you're not in this category, God bless you, has gotten to those points that you don't want to read God's word. There is no drive in you. You know it's the right thing to do, but the devil has snatched every inch of energy and drive for God's word and for prayer. And he uses your flesh. He uses anger. He uses bitterness. He uses alcoholism. That you find, you find, you find more fulfillment being high rather than spending time with God. And he lies to you, that is the in thing. He uses unforgiveness. Snatches out. He uses Instagram and TikTok. 
Mhm. Hallelujah. Demographic hapa ni ya TikTok yote. <laughs> the biggest demographic hapa ni TikTok. Then when you when you when you, when you look at you, you know some of our phones can show us the graph of how you used your week. You use the apps in your week. Eh? Do I mention your hours on TikTok? No. But you can scroll video after video after video until 3 a.m. But oh, read one chapter of scripture. W- one. <sighs> one. Pray. Pray, 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 and don't just bring your request. Spend time with God. Impossible. It sucks out the energy from your prayer life and from your devotions. It's your flesh. And this is what happens is that as that thing festers and grows in you you lose control. It is no, you you can't stop yourself from you have no power. And all of us can relate. I am sure of that. All of us can relate that there is a habit in your life that you really want to stop. You really want to stop. You really want to put an end to it and you know it is the problem. But you can't. In fact it it is the one that calls you. And and sometimes, can I tell you a secret? Sometimes we love sin. Some of us enjoy sin. You don't want to give up the pleasure that your flesh is gaining for the thing that you are struggling with. Yet you know this thing is the reason why you are not experiencing God. But but I like it. I I'm, I'm not willing to give it up. And in Romans chapter 8 the Bible says therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because through Christ Jesus the law of the spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death for what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering and so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh but we live according to the spirit verse 5 is where i want to go to those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on the flesh a book on mind that is what mind number 1 their flesh desires but those who live according with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires The mind governed by the flesh is death but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It 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 it, it where am I? It does not submit to God's law nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. They can't. You realize how many times he has addressed mind? Because your the devil attacks your mind. He comes through your mind. He comes through your mind to keep you hooked to the flesh. Let me give you a story. This story will be in part 1, part 2. Uh part 1. One. one time, not long ago, a rat sneaked into our house and decided to make itself comfortable. And so you know one of those times that you are seated and you want you see whoop, you, what, you, what, what, what is that And so as the priest of the house I was tasked <laughs> with the duty of extinguishing <laughs> this rat that was in our house And so I went out to agrovets you know trying to figure out you know what what do you use to kill a rat So this rat rat and rat you put in food you poison it but I'm like hey, you can't live rent free in my house and I give you food so like no so you know the, the rat and rat was not an option for me you can use a trap okay kanza there are two traps there's the one that uh, it it gets to eat and then it's snapped isn't it and then there's another one that I really wanted but they really wanted the villain because so the one that has glue you know that one that you put food and then the rat comes and gets stuck there and you find a helpless rat you can even go like hey. <laughs> hello 
I really wanted that, but I didn't get it, you know? So I, as I was, I was going around, I was, you know, I was, in, you know, advised to take what they called pellets. They are like pellets. They are pellets. They are blue, small blue stuff. That the, the guy from the agrovet told me, this one is like sweet to the rat. It's like candy. So you put the blue stuff where, you know, the normal root that the rat <laughs> uses, and you put it there. And you hope that this rat will eat, and then, of course, it's poisoned and dies. So we put, I went, went home, put the, the, the candy. <laughs> Sorry. The rat candy on the floor, in the root that, you know, it was there. And true to, true to, to, to their word, by the way, by morning, zilikuwa zimekuliwa. And I'm like, now it's the waiting game. Let's wait for the rat to to die. Something interesting happened. On one of the days, I found the rat in the kitchen floor. It was not dead. It was not dead. But it was very weak. So, our cabinets have like a step. And where it, use, it, it usually hides is behind the cabinets. It was so weak that it couldn't go up the step to go and hide from me. So, it's, it's just there. It's like, I am under your mercy now. You know, it's just, it's trying to walk, but it's too weak. It's trying to, and it's too weak. It's, it's, it can't do anything. I was gracious that day I didn't kill it. Yeah, I'm a good person. <laughs> I waited for it to die a natural death. <laughs> and in uh, around two or three hours, it was dead. And so, you know, <laughs> you know the devil puts trinkets and candy our way so that it can entice you to eat that candy that looks so sweet, yet it leads to death. Huh? And some of these candies are things that don't look like they are harmful. But these things come to snatch out the energy from your life because remember the Bible says that if you want to pray, you close the door and you go into your secret place. Because your devotional place is your secret place. And the Father who sees you in secret will reward you in public. Now, the devil comes, offers you these candy trinkets. Social media, TikTok, addictions, alcoholism, bitterness, pride, those things. And he offers you an opportunity to enjoy them. And what happens is that when we start enjoying these things, the life out of us is, begins to be sucked out. And it reaches a point that you cannot go to your hiding place to seek the Lord. It reaches a point that you are at the mercy of the devil. You do not have strength to go up just one step and hide so that you can be safe. Many of us are there. We are on the kitchen floor trying to rise up, but we have no strength. That's what the devil does by introducing these small, small things in your life that look harmless, by the way. It, it's, it's work. I am busy. Where do you guys get time to do a devotion? I am busy. I don't have time. By evening, I'm so tired. I am busy. A trinket laid by the devil. Hmm? I am good. I, I, I usually I, I, I pray on the road. Hmm? You are weak. You cannot go into your hiding place. And that you are at his mercy. And the devil is not as kind as me. He will, by the way, the Bible says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He is looking for every opportunity to kill you, to steal from you, and to destroy your life completely. Why do you have to destroy something you've already killed? So that you are forgotten. Nobody, you are a warning letter. Forever. <laughs> That's what he wants to do. Now, part two of that conversation is also very interesting. That two weeks later, we, we started feeling a certain stench in the house. 
And we're wondering, but we killed the rat and we threw it away. But there's a certain stench that um, we are hearing in the house. Turns out there were two rats. But they look alike, see? <laughs> so you see them in turns. It's like, like they say, <laughs> two rats. We didn't know there was a second rat. So the second rat also ate the trinkets. It ate and then it died. Died to the point that it also it started even decomposing. And so we had to look for the smell and find the rat that was dead. You know, you might look all packaged well, but you are dead. Do you know how we know? The smell. Do you know what is the smell? Your attitude. Your words. Your actions. They tell us something is dead here. Something is, is dead. Something is dead here. You have, your, your flesh has become so alive that your spirit is dead. Is dead. And that's what happens to most of us when we allow the devil to entice you with those things that look like candy. They look harmless. It's, 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 it's sexting. We are just, we are just, we are just, we are just, we are just playing around. It's not, never that serious. But it steals, it eats all the energy that when you want to pray, you can't. Now, when you want to seek God, you can't. When you want to follow him, you can't. You do not have the power to do so. But there is hope. Tell your neighbor there is hope. The Bible says, verse 9, Romans chapter 8, You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of the spirit who lives in you. This is the beautiful thing that Jesus did for us. Now, when he died on the cross, when he took away all our sins, when he took away all our, when we received him, he gave us a deposit. And the deposit is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of life. He brings life. By the way, there's a verse, there's a memory verse that says, Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. Christ lives in me. The life I live, I live by faith. Because when, by the Paul says, we have been baptized into Christ's death. When you give your life to Jesus, your flesh dies with Christ dies with Christ and then he gives you life through the Holy Spirit and what life means is that the Holy Spirit when he comes inside of you he gives you the capacity the power the capability the grace to now say no to that sin he gives you the strength to say I will not do it today and it's not only today it's every other day I will not do it. He's the one who gives you the strength to say, I will not lie anymore. He's the one who gives you the capacity to say, I will not go for that sleepover. I am okay. I don't need to smoke weed to be happy. I don't need to take alcohol to be happy. He's the one who shows you true happiness and gives you true joy and draws you to the place where you can stand by the way, when you start opening your life to the Holy Spirit, these things die naturally. That you even surprise yourself. You're like, there are things I used to struggle with. Huh? I'm not struggling with them anymore. I don't need to, I don't need to block my phone. I don't need to quit social media. Because of I'm 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 scared of being tempted. I have control. Are we together? I no longer lie. I still love to lie. And you're like, I am surprising myself. Like, ah, ah. 
Because he gives you life, that life is transformative. Are we together? Jesus says, I came so that you may have life and have it in its abundance. All of you who are born again have a deposit of the Holy Spirit inside of you. But he is dormant. You live by your flesh. He is dormant. You don't utilize him. By the way, do you know the AKA of the Holy Spirit? He is a helper. Helper. What is the meaning of a helper? He helps. Is that true? That is his JT in your life. To help you to live for God. So if you don't engage him, how are you able to... In fact, he says the mind governed by the flesh cannot please God. It does not have capacity to please God. But the mind governed by the spirit is life. Is life. Is life is life and you begin to see a fresh path of life in your soul when you, you begin to see that I can pray more by the way you know the secret is what ask for help when I got to my lowest of points I read this scripture and it saved my life because I realized I cannot win this battle on my own you cannot fight flesh with flesh I got to the point of saying, I need help. Holy Spirit, I need help. So many of you, so many of you are not being honest with God, with your struggles. You say, God, I, I, I can't, I can't. You're forgetting that he sees in secret. So he knows what you're struggling with. He just needs you to say, I need help. I need help to overcome this Lord. Hold my hand. I can't stop like, but I, but I, but I need, I need help. I, I, I've come to myself, and I am humble before you, and I say, this is a struggle, Lord, and I don't want to do it anymore. Help me, help me, help me. And that's even though Jay Diag atakusaidi, he will help you. As I finish, this is what the Bible says in the book of. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 one of my favorite scriptures the Bible says and I read in uh, let me read NIV and then I go and read NLT it says for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure NLT says it very well it says for God is working in you giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him from the desire to the execution of the desire. It's God's work. It's not your work. You cannot make yourself love scripture. It is him who does it. So if you don't ask for help, how are you doing it? You are not able to do it. How many of us have gone to sleep and you feel something is telling you to wake up to pray in the morning? Some of you call it a voice. But I can categorically tell you, it's the Holy Spirit that is nudging you to wake up tomorrow morning to pray. Maybe there is a danger somewhere. He's nudging you, keeping you the desire. Start trying to light a match and tell you, by the way, Amka, Amka Wombe. Because remember, your flesh does not want things of God. So you cannot tell yourself, you cannot, your flesh cannot come with a brilliant idea and say, wow, I think we should pray. It, it's impossible. It's the Holy Spirit. Most of us ignore that nudging. Most of us ignore that he, the Holy Spirit tells you, I'm, I'm going to deal with your greed. Give this money to so and so. You're like, ah, get behind me, Satan. That was his way of killing that greed. That was his way of removing that pressure of not having money in your life. But you don't listen, you do not yield. And like, something told me to do this, but I, I decided to sleep. That's why how you start walking with the Holy Spirit is you start obeying the nudgings and the yieldings of Him. By the way, the Bible says that you will hear a still small voice telling you this is the way to go. He's not loud. He's not loud. Sometimes you can even confuse Him with your thoughts. 
but it is him who is telling you my child so you read scripture today because 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 i know you 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 are about to lose your job and you will need all the encouragement you can get i i i, I know that you are about to get into a storm and you and you will need to know that i'm right there in the midst of that storm open your bible and read my my child pray pray because there is an accident that is about to happen but i want to save you from it so w- wake up and pray w- wake up and, I, and i'll give you by the minute you start obeying the nudgings of the holy spirit he begins to strengthen you he begins to give you more strength more strength each day that today i woke up i survived 2 3 days of devotion next week i've done 5 days the other week i uh, i finished 2 weeks he g- begins to give you more strength and more energy to keep going and keep growing in god you need to ask for help you need to ask for help you need to ask for help stop struggling ask tell him god begin the wa- begin working this was a working in you tell him begin to work in me the desire to love you begin to work in me the desire to do your will begin to work in me nikazi this is the true definition of work in po- progress ni hi watana na hii tunasema anga christians that i am a work in progress the true one is this one that the holy spirit is working in you so that you progress are we together and that's why when i read the letter i said when paul was saying that this letter that we are really praising is not written by human hands it is written by the holy spirit it is the holy spirit that starts to write a new letter in you that people can read something different that people can read something new that people can read something fresh he begins to write a new story for you are you struggling with addiction you need help there is help are you struggling with whatever that is sucking out your energy there is help it's the holy spirit I want us to rise on our feet and pray i want to give you five good minutes to cry out to the lord and tell the lord i need your help i have tried in my own strength i realize i can't and i want you to be genuine with him genuine and pray just pray it's a serious matter it's a serious matter the thing that stops you from getting your destiny is a serious matter it's a serious matter begin to ask for help begin to tell him i can't i can't i can't live like this i need your help i need i need to stop struggling with this thing help me holy spirit i need to hear you you need to take out this bitterness that has engulfed me you need to take out this anger that steals everything every energy in me tell him i need your help i need your help i need your help i need your help holy spirit come on pray
begin to give to us in the name of Jesus. And we will obey when you call us to the place of prayer. And we will obey. And we will follow you. We thank you. Romans chapter 6 verse 14. For sin shall no longer be your master. Because you are not under the law. But under grace. Sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law you are under grace may you receive strength to stand for your generation may you receive strength to stand for your children may you receive strength to stand may you receive strength to stand to live and burn for him to hunger and thirst for him and maybe you are here and you've not given your life to Jesus Christ. It starts there. I will not mince my words. You are dead. You are dead. If you've not given your life to Jesus, you are dead. You have no capacity to save yourself. You have no capacity to change yourself. You have no capacity to achieve the destiny that he has called you to. If you're here, you've not given your life to Jesus, just lift up your hand. Just lift up your hand boldly. Just lift it up. Someone will come and pray with you. You're here, you've not given your life to Jesus. Or you backslid. You backslid. You know there is no faith in you. Lift up your hand. We want to pray with you. And we want to call you out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. bless you. Thank you for what you've done today. I know categorically that someone's life has changed forever because you've received the secret of what you've been struggling with and your life will never be the same again. Quicken us, oh God. As you say in the book of Psalms chapter 80, quicken us and we will call upon your name. Quicken us and we'll call upon our name. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. We celebrate the Lord this afternoon. For our online congregation, thank you so much for joining us. May the Lord bless you. May this word bear fruit in your life. And may you be able to have the strength and the grace and the capacity to resist the devil and to stand. Be blessed in Jesus' name.